Hi everyone! Welcome to Soup Top Recipes. Today I will share a gluten-free dumpling recipe. It's one of my favorite dim sum dishes, Chaozhou Feng Guo. It has a beautiful transparent skin and a flavorful, healthy filling. You're gonna love it. First, let's make the filling. The ingredient list is pretty big. Some of them might be new to you guys. I will talk about it in detail. Soak four pieces of dried shiitake mushroom with room temperature water two hours in advance. Once they are rehydrated, squeeze the water, save the soaking liquid. We will use that later. Slice the mushroom and dice it. This is what we call the sha ge. It's also known as hikama or Mexican turnip. You just remove the skin, dice the meat. It tastes almost like a pear or a water chestnut. Sweet, crunchy, and juicy. I bought this in Walmart, so I assume that it should be easy to get. However, if you can't find it, you can use carrot, water chestnut, or daikon radish as a replacement. We only need half of a cup. You can snack on the rest. This is cai pu. It is Chaozhou style preserved daikon radish. You want to get the xian cai pu, which is preserved with salt. There is another sweet kind that is preserved with sugar and salt. Don't get that one. This one is diced already, so you just use it as it is. If you get the whole piece like that, you need to dice it. It should be easy to find in most Asian markets. If you cannot get this ingredient, you can use pickled vegetables or zha cai as a replacement. Tofu gan is compressed tofu, so it's firm. This one that I get is braised in a spice brine. It's salty and flavorful. There are other kinds of tofu gan that doesn't have that much flavors, so you might need to adjust the seasonings based on what you use. You can look up the tofu section in your local Asian groceries. You should be able to find it. Same as other ingredients. Finally, dice it. This is gan xia ren, sun-dried shrimp. The other one is xia pi, translate as shrimp skin. They are just sun-dried baby shrimps. They don't have that much meat, so they look like shrimp shells. That's why we named it xia pi. I am just showing you two options. But you only need one of them. If you use the big one, you need to soak it in water one hour in advance and then dice it. Today I will use these baby shrimps. No need to soak or dice. Here are ten ounces of ground pork, marinated with two teaspoons of soy sauce, two teaspoons of fish sauce, one tablespoon of Chinese cooking wine, one tablespoon of oyster sauce. One tablespoon of satay sauce. This is what I'm using. It is an optional ingredient, but I like the nuttiness and the complexity of it. One teaspoon of sugar and some white pepper to taste. Mix until the flavor is well combined. Unlike other dumpling fillings, this one you don't need to whisk the meat within one direction. Set it aside. Besides that. You will also need one shallot. It looks like a mini red onion, and yes, you can use red onion as a replacement. Finally, dice it. Two cloves of garlic, smash and dice them as well. Finally, mince one and a half teaspoon of ginger. Set these aromatics aside. Heat your wok. Add some cooking oil along with all the aromatics. Stir for a few seconds, then add the diced shiitake mushroom, preserved radish, braised tofu, and the sun-dried baby shrimps. Keep stirring over medium heat for a couple of minutes. Toss in the diced hikama. The reason I add it a little late is that I want to keep the crunchy texture. Stir for another minute, then push everything to the side so we have room for the ground pork. The wok looks a little dry. I drizzled a couple of teaspoons of oil in it. The pork is seasoned, and the shrimp, tofu, preserved radish already have flavors, so you don't need to add any more seasonings. 
Just stir to cook the pork through. It will just take a few minutes. Turn the heat to low. Pour in some cornstarch water in batches. This will help to bind the filling together. By the way, I used the mushroom soaking liquid here. Give it a taste to make sure the flavor is good. Take it out, set it aside, and let it cool completely. While waiting, let's dice half of a stalk of celery. If you can find Chinese celery, it will be better. If not, use regular celery as I did. We also need one and a half cup of garlic chives. If you don't like the flavor of the garlic chives, or you don't have the access to this ingredient, you can use spinach, scallion, or fennel. Combine them together. Add a big drizzle of toasted sesame oil. Mix well. This is not only for the nutty flavor. We're gonna mix the chives, celery with the filling together. The oil will help to wrap the chives and prevent it from releasing moisture after it touches the seasonings. You want to mix them when the pork is completely cooled down so the chives don't get soggy. By the way, the local Chaozhou Fengguo has roasted peanuts in the filling, but I personally don't like peanuts in the dumplings, so I didn't add it. Set it aside and let's make the wrapper. As I mentioned before. This is a gluten-free wrapper, but the wheat starch is not an easy ingredient to find. It is okay to use regular dumpling wrappers. You can check my dumpling from scratch video for that. You will need three kinds of starch: wheat starch, tapioca starch, and corn starch. This is the formula, so I don't have replacements for them. But there are pre-mixed products on the market for this specific type of dumplings. You can just buy it and follow the instructions on the package to make the clear wrappers. However, I am going to make my own today. You just combine three kinds of starch together, stir to mix well, turn on the flame, add a drizzle of vegetable oil to 300 grams of water, put on the lid. Bring this to a boil. Don't go away because it only takes a minute or two. If you let it boil for too long, some of the water evaporates. You won't have the correct water-starch ratio. Remove it from the stove immediately, adding a third of the starch mixture. Stir to mix well. Some of the starch will become transparent. Some of the starch will clump up together. Don't worry a thing. Just keep mixing for a minute. Add another one third of the starch. Continue to mix nonstop for a minute. Add the rest of the starch. Keep mixing until everything forms into a non-smooth dough. It is better to use a non-stick pot and a rubber spatula so you don't make a mess. Put on the lid. Let it rest for five minutes. Five minutes later. Add everything into a heavy-duty pot or a ceramic bowl, whatever container you have. On the side here, prepare a little bit of vegetable oil. I'm using a rolling pin to punch the dough. If you feel that the dough is sticky, you can dip the rolling pin in the oil and continue punching. Use the silicone spatula to flip so it doesn't stick to your hand. By doing this. The starch chain will bind together in a deeper way, and the wrapper will be gooey. This will take about eight to ten minutes. Once the dough becomes smooth, you can test with your hand. It shouldn't stick to your fingers. Pull it a little bit. It should be stretchy and elastic. Take it out and start kneading it on the working surface. Keep shaping it into a long log. If you feel the dough gets sticky, you can apply some cornstarch to prevent that. Cut it in half. Keep rolling these two pieces longer and longer. The amount that I gave is enough to make 24 dumplings, so we will divide the dough into 24 even pieces. Each piece should be 20 to 22 grams. The cut surface will stick to each other easily, so you have to sprinkle some cornstarch to prevent that. 
Cover the dough pieces with a plastic wrap so they don't get dry. Sprinkle more flour. Take one piece of the dough, flatten it with your hand. Use the rolling pin to roll it bigger. Once it reaches three and a half inches in diameter, lift it up and roll the edge all the way around. This way, you can get a wrapper with a thinner edge and a thick middle. Put it away. Continue making the rest. Now let's close the dumplings. Put some filling. I used about two and a half tablespoon. This is going to be a big size, which is satisfying. Dip some water to wet the edge all the way around. Carefully fold it in half. Pack it tight. Pinch the edge to close it. Fold the edge like that to make pleats. There you go. Looks lovely. Fill the pot with some water. Put on the steamer rack. Apply some oil on it so the dumplings don't stick to the rack. Place the dumplings in one by one. Leave some space in between. Oil the second rack. Continue putting the dumplings. Cover them. Turn the heat to high. Once the water starts boiling, let it steam for ten minutes. The filling is already cooked. You just want to steam the wrappers. Ten minutes later, you can open the lid, but do not touch the dumplings because the wrapper is very vulnerable now. You can't pick it up without breaking them at this moment. Just let it sit there without the lid for a few minutes. The skin gets a little firmer. You can pick it up. This is a steamed dumpling recipe, so don't think about boiling them, or else the skin will get soggy in the water. I am not gonna talk about the dipping sauce in this video. You can check my six dumpling dipping sauce recipes. I will put the video link in the description. The wrapper has a different texture compared to a regular dumpling that is made with wheat flour. It's soft, gooey, sticky, kind of like mochi ball. The filling is savory and well balanced with so many kinds of ingredients. I hope you give this a try soon. If you did, leave me a comment. Let me know how it goes. As always, you can click the link in the description and find the printable recipe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.